Good morning again, everyone. Welcome again back to the KSR YouTube channel. It's another lovely day in Florida. This has kind of been our, kind of been our thing lately. A lot of rain, get a lot of sun. And just wanted to show you guys something that I thought was real interesting while I pulled in this morning. You know, I've lived in Gainesville area my entire life. So I don't know if people get this everywhere else, but it's kind of one of the reasons why I probably have the allergies that I do. So pulling in this morning, check out what's all around this puddle here in the parking lot. All that is pollen. And you can see it's just all over and around this puddle. So that's one day's worth of pollen that's been washed off the parking lot. Um, we, we got a bunch of rain a couple days ago. It was pretty nice yesterday, and then it's, it started raining this morning pretty early. So maybe that's a funny thing for us to whine about here being Floridians. That's us. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, today's video is about something that has been important to me for a while and I haven't put too much of it into videos, but it's got a lot to do with safety in a race car. So I've been in and around racing stuff now for a little over 20 years. And the most common thing that I see new people that get involved with racing it's got to do with something that seems like it's very basic, and that is seatbelts. How to properly use your racing harnesses. So let's head into the shop. We've got a car on the dyno that actually I'll show you guys a little bit about. Some of you have showed some interest in it. As seeing it in the background of some other videos, but we're gonna use it for a greater purpose today, racing seatbelts. So we all want to be able to enjoy race cars. Race cars are dangerous. You can get hurt very badly in a race car, as you guys know. And what you're about to hear in this video is my opinion on how to use seat belts, at least the way I use seat belts and the way I feel is a good way to use seat belts and a proper way to use seat belts. You know, Hopefully this is important to everybody that's racing in a car. If you guys want to share this video around to other people, other YouTubers that you feel could use some of this advice, feel free. We appreciate everybody that subscribes to the channel and comments and likes and shares. You guys that are regulars on the channel probably know that you, know, you see me get in and I try and comment back to a lot of the comments you guys make. It's getting to be a bit of a job, which I think is is awesome, and I appreciate that. And I'm going to keep doing as much as I can to keep commenting on those videos until it just gets so big that I can't do it. But we're not there yet, so I'm going to keep trying to reply to as many of you as I can. And uh, like I said, thanks for everybody that subscribed. Please subscribe if you haven't. Hit the notification bell. Um, you know, some of you guys say that we make up the stuff about people being unsubscribed to the channel. I've got like close friends that were unsubscribed from the channel. So check your subscription, please click the notification bell. And uh, if you wanna buy some merch, winwithksr.com, we do have a few things. We've got a couple of new shirts we've been working on. It's been a little hectic for me to sit down and you know, kind of do some of the creative stuff with t-shirts and some different things and hats and some keychains we're kind of working on. Been too busy in the shop. So we're gonna solve that. Hopefully, as we get some of these projects done and get mullet to the track. So, the completion for mullet, just while we're on this video, Bradenton, Cletus and Cars. That's going to be, that's our goal. We had had an idea of getting it to TX2K, um, which is in, I think, three weeks, two and a half weeks from when I'm shooting this video. But we've had some, some delays on some parts. The pandemic and everything has really messed up some stuff. I've gotten out of sync on my schedule a little bit for getting some parts ordered, um, but we're getting there. Let's get back to the car we're going to use for this video, and I'll give you a walk around with it, and then get into the meat and potatoes of the video. All right, so some of you 
may have picked up in the background of some of our videos and seen in some of our banners, we actually do quite a bit of road racing here at KSR. And it all started years ago with this car, which is a 1991 Nissan 300ZX. Obviously you can tell it's missing the roof. And we have run this car in, uh, it started out as the Chump Car World Series. Now it has kind of been renamed into the Champ Car Endurance Series. And uh, along the lines of the years, uh, we actually built another car, which was this Lexus SC300. This is a 95 Lexus SC300 owned by David. So this car is one we built and I don't remember the exact year that we debuted it, but very successful car for us. It's first race ever. We finished third with it. Second race, we finished fourth. This is, these are 14 hour races. Um, we race Road Atlanta with the car, Daytona, International Speedway. We use the road course that they use for the, the 24 hours of Daytona. Uh, we race Sebring, lots and lots and lots of races. And in the middle of all that, I purchased another SC300 and as you can tell, uh, it's been, it's had some, some wall impacts and some other car to car contact. This is not the same car that's in the banner. You see it's 226, that car is 225. This, well, nope, that's the car we're about to talk about. The, the 300ZX was 223. So we've had kind of a progression of cars. We had a 240 that was 224. Um, and this car I rent out to people that want to come, you know, race the series, but don't want to build the car themselves. We bring a crew and you know, basically you show up and drive. You've got your gear, got all your safety gear and you show up, fly in, get your hotel room. We bring the car, we bring the crew and you go racing. But as you can kind of tell from some of the damage on this car, you know, like this, this quarter panel was caved in here. Actually, the whole driver's side of the car was flat. The hood's scrunched up. That's actually from me. <laughs> and I crashed the car last year at Daytona and piled it into the tire wall pretty hard but everything was okay. You know, all the wheels were still pointed the same direction. I managed to, I broadsided the tire wall with the, uh, the side of the car. The car kind of bounced off, but because I had my seat belts on nice and tight, and it wasn't a terribly hard crash, but it was a crash, and it caved in the whole side of the car, but we were able to keep racing. You know, safety is very important. We all want to keep, we all want to keep racing. We all love racing. It's, you know, the thrill, but it is dangerous. And like I said, this is, this video is my opinion about how to use your racing seat belts more properly. And the car we're going to use today is, I don't remember the year, but it is an NC Miata and still stock engine. Uh, this, this car is owned by Grant and Chuck and Grant was involved with the original build of the Chop Top car, uh, the 300ZX, all the way back, uh, all the way back to 2000, 2009, we started building that car. So you can see we actually, here at KSR, we did the cage in this car, and then we did the rear sheet metal work here to close off the trunk panel. We kind of did it in a way that, you know, helps the, helps the airflow get out of the car. The idea for cutting the roof off is to get the car as light as possible. Most of the tracks that they intend to race with this car are not super high speed. So aero doesn't play as much of a role and it's, you kind of play the balance of, um, you know, how much the drag is gonna hurt you versus how much better the car is gonna do in the corners by taking weight off the top of the car. So anyways, we're gonna use this car for demonstrating some seatbelt stuff. Uh, the guys won their second race out with this car. It was a uh, seven hour endurance race at Virginia International Raceway. That was late last year, late 2020. 
and you know it's it's a basic car but it's been very well scienced out grant is very smart when it comes to setting up the suspension stuff and it was a big hand in setting the 300 zx up and they both grant and chuck are both excellent drivers and do a really good job wheeling this thing all right so the first thing i'm actually going to touch on get my phone out of my pocket first thing i'm going to touch on is seating position you can see we're nice down low in this car and grant and chuck are both taller than i am and for me to drive this car like if i put my shoulders all the way back which is where they should be when my belts are fully tight ideally you want at least the way that makes this most comfortable for me i try to set it up where if I, my shoulders are touching touching the seat and i pull my I put my arms straight out i want the steering wheel to be somewhere in here because if you think about being out here and driving the car you're using up a lot of your arm muscles and we're talking the way these races work you're driving the car for two hours at a time and it's pretty intense road racing so for me oh i can't move this seat forward i forgot for those guys we actually bolted the seat in solid so a little bit of a fail on i can't slide the seat forward but the seat is on sliders and they have some different spacers that allow them to bolt the seat back solid um so one thing you'll notice the seat is extremely solid in the car so that's what you want in a race car is for the seat to be nice and solid in the car but this thing is set up too long for me and my preferences and just everything being stretched out you know it takes everything i've got to be able to push the gas pedal to the floor as well as the clutch like i can just barely get the clutch to the stop and that's if i'm using just the tip of my toes so what do you do you slide the seat forward until the steering wheel kind of comes you know a little bit a little bit behind where my wrist is that's my preference i feel like that's a safer way to go about it but the main part of this video it's got to do with seat belts and this car has really nice belts in it they're uh, on a cam lock system see how easy they tighten and loosen so we can switch drivers really fast at races at endurance races so one thing you want to do when you are setting up your seat belts in your car you want to make sure if you've got a seat belt that has an adjuster in it which this one you can see how this adjuster is down here outside of the seat so we've we've made that to where it's not in the way it's not in the way of getting the belts tighter and it's not going to be pinching on your hips you know while you're piloting the car so you get yourself all buckled in and one of the things i see people do the most new people that are getting used to race racing first thing they do is they grab their shoulder belts pull them nice and tight all right we're good mm -mm. it's not the way you tighten seat belts I'm not racing seat belts anyways so now what you've done you pull your you pull your lap belts tight and in this seat it doesn't show as bad as it could have but what's happening now is the, the lap belts are more above my hip bones. So you think about human anatomy, you kind of want the belts down to be kind of grabbing your hips in the car. And if you go above your hips, well now you're more into your stomach with your lap belts. And that's not good if you ever need your seatbelts. 
So the first thing to do, first belts to tighten when you get into a race car, always, always the lap belts. So the way this car works with these cam locks, you see how easy they come loose. The cam locks flip out, and actually how I do them, I'm, I force the cam lock to stay tight. They'll stay tight, you can see them, they'll flip back automatically. But if I pull this tight and I, I give it a little bit of a head start, really, really holds me in tight. So now my hips are held into the seat. And then you come back and tighten your shoulder belts. And I kind of wiggle myself in and back and push, push myself down. And one big key when I am strapping somebody into a car, if I see I can pull this and get my hand in here and turn it sideways, the belts are way too loose. So for example, we just pull this tight. Yeah, I'm good. No. So see, I can come in here and turn my fist sideways. That's not good. One of the things I've picked up on and watching some other racer YouTubers, you know, you see them after a run and they're in the shutdown and they're, they're moving all around in the car. Well, what do you think is going to happen when you crash? Like these belts, you don't think they stretch, but they will stretch in a big impact. And the belts are designed to keep you in the seat, keep you away from the roll cage. So if they start loose, well, you now have momentum where your body is going to hit the belts and potentially hit other things around you, whether it's roll cage, steering wheel, you know, shifter, or other parts of the roll cage. Now you want these things to be so tight. You want them to be tight enough that it almost hurts a little bit. Like when you're sitting here stationary, because you want to be tight. You see, I can't, I can't hardly move and it doesn't take much difference. So like I can't even make my shoulder touch this pad right here. Same with, same with this side. But if we're just, if we just pull them snug, oh yeah, I can easily, I can even get my shoulder out and touch the front side of that. Same with that side. You can see ugh, how far my hands go forward when they're loose. Pull them tight like they're supposed to be. Huge difference. What's that, three inches difference just from loosening that belt up a little bit? And inevitably what happens, especially with road racing, you end up loosening up in the car. Your body gets a little dehydrated, so you get thinner while you're racing the car. Your, the seat pads compress, the fibers in your fire suit compress. Everything loosens you up in the car, and you just end up getting loose in the car. And that is not what you want. Now, I don't have my, my Hans device on, but that locks me in even tighter. When I have my neck restraint, which I don't actually use a Hans, I use a different brand, but my neck restraint system actually holds me down into the car that much tighter. And you can, you can, some of you guys may have noticed this is only a two inch wide belt, and that's because we use a Hans device. So, tighten your seat belts is the moral of the story. So one thing I do when I drag race Soccer Mom or any other of these real fast cars, I set my I set my lap belts real tight. And even after the burnout, I will re-snug my shoulder straps. So they're nice and tight. And I think I've got a video clip that I'll insert somewhere in here. But after I do the burnout, before I pull the car into the staging beams, you'll see me wiggle back in the seat and really, and I'm even, I'm kind of leveraging my hand here. So this hand's pulling the, this hand's pulling the strap and then this one's pushing down. 
Oh. And I mean, now I am in the car. I am one with the car. do this stuff for a long time goes with racers anybody that's new getting into racing tighten your seat belts like it's it sounds simple but so the difference between this and this is a huge deal and I mean and I see people in cars in videos where everything is loose. Yeah, we got my seatbelts on. All right, I'm good. I'm going racing. No, no, no. So one thing you may not think about, but it's a different tuning aspect even. This is something I've learned that I think is important for other people to know of. So I'm passing it on to you guys. But the tighter I get into a car, the better I can feel what the car is doing. Whether it's, you know, on a road race car, say it's going into a corner and you can feel different things happening with the car. In the 300ZX, we broke a spring one time. We had modified the spring, but we broke that spring. And I was belted into the car so tight that I could feel which corner was broken on the car. You know, I, was, I would go into a corner and I would feel the car fall differently turning to the left versus turning to the right. And I felt like it was more when I was on the brakes and slowing down and turning. So not only was I being safer, but I was being faster because I was belted into the car tighter. I was one with the car. So being in the car tighter, in my opinion, does not have any negatives. So it's safer, the car communicates with you better, and it'll make you faster. So thanks for tuning in to this episode of Tech Talk with Kevin. We'll see you in the next one.